Hello everyone, welcome to this week's video. My room needs a little bit of TLC, so I'm just gonna be cleaning in the background while I share what I've been learning in the book of Daniel. Now I titled this video, How to Be in the World and Not of the World. And what does that mean? The world that we live in today is just so far from what God intended. It's really hard sometimes to remain obedient and faithful to God. So Daniel is a beautiful example of somebody who, although everyone around him is doing something one way, decides to remain faithful to God and finds favor in God in doing so. I'm going to just share a couple things I learned in the first three chapters, and hopefully this is some encouragement and reminder of what happens when we remain faithful. So Daniel's name means God is my judge, and I absolutely love how much Daniel references God and gives credit to God throughout this book. He gives credit to God for an overseer being sympathetic to him. He asks his friends to pray when he comes into conflict. He gives praise to God when he gets revealed a vision. So all throughout the good and the bad, Daniel's consistently talking to God and giving credit to God. So in chapter one, Daniel, who is a righteous and faithful Jew, ends up going to Babylon with three of his friends. Now, Babylonian law is completely different than Jewish law. So he's heading into territory with people doing things and eating a diet completely different to those of the Jews. So King Nebuchadnezzar, who's the king of Babylon, is looking for young, handsome, educated, wise men who are capable of entering the king's royal service. And so he's looking to train up these men for three years and give them a diet of royal delicacies, which we assume to be meat, and royal wine. Now, this is where the Daniel fast, if you've heard of the Daniel fast, comes in. Daniel doesn't want to eat these things because they don't follow the Old Testament Jewish law. And so he asks the overseer of the court officials if he could just have a diet of vegetables and water. The king's concerned because he doesn't want Daniel and his three friends looking weak and malnourished, but Daniel trusts God and wants to remain faithful. So he says, no, I've made up my mind. Please test us for 10 days and compare us at the end to your royal servants who are eating these delicacies and deal with us in light of what you see. So what do you know? At the end of the 10 days, Daniel and the other three Israelites appear younger and healthier than those who consumed the royal delicacies. And immediately after this verse, verse 17 says, Now, as for these four young men, God endowed them with knowledge and skill in all sorts of literature and wisdom, and Daniel had insight into all kinds of visions and dreams. I love that that's immediately after because it shows that with Daniel remaining faithful to God, God provided him with knowledge, skill, wisdom, and insight into visions and dreams. So God sometimes speaks to us in visions and dreams. Sometimes he gives us wisdom when we ask him for wisdom. And you can see here that Daniel was reliant on God because of course he's not gonna expect to come out stronger and healthier by just eating vegetables all day. But what do you know? The power of God <laughs> comes above anything else. You know, the king finds them to be the healthiest and most wise. And in chapter two, the king has a disturbing dream. Now he calls on magicians and astrologers and sorcerers and all these kinds of people that are supposed to have the knowledge and the wisdom to reveal information. And so he asked them to tell him what his dream was and to interpret it for him. But <laughs> what do you know? They can't. They say, hey, tell us your dream and we'll interpret it for you. And the king's like, no, that's not how this works. You're going to tell me my dream and you're going to interpret it for me because you're like magicians. You're supposed to know all this stuff. But they don't. So they're freaking out because the king's like, hey, if you can't do both, you'll be dismembered and your homes will be reduced to rubble. So they go to Daniel and they're like telling him what's going on. And Daniel goes to his friends and says, hey, we need to pray to the God of heaven because we don't want to be destroyed along with these guys in Babylon. So they pray and God reveals in a night vision what King Nebuchadnezzar's dream is and what the interpretation is. Next verse says, So Daniel praised the God of heaven, saying, Let the name of God be praised forever and ever. 
for wisdom and power belong to him. Skipping a few verses, but then it says he gives wisdom to the wise, imparts knowledge to those with understanding, and he reveals deep and hidden things. So again, you see Daniel needs something. He goes to God and prays. He asks others to pray. He receives the wisdom and he praises God. So he's in communication with God all throughout, the good and the bad. So what does he do? He goes to King Nebuchadnezzar, tells him his dream, and is able to interpret it. And he gives credit to God so that King Nebuchadnezzar then bows down to Daniel and says, Certainly your God is a God of gods and Lord of kings and revealer of mysteries, for you were able to reveal this mystery. He elevated Daniel to high position, gave him many gifts, and granted him authority over the entire province of Babylon. Here again we see when we decide to put God first, God over man, please God over people, to remain obedient when everybody else is doing whatever they do, God will find favor on us and we will be rewarded for that. We're not doing these things and remaining obedient just for our personal gain, but we can expect, you know, God keeps his word and if we decide to follow him, we will receive abundance. That might not come in the form that you expect or in the time frame that you expect, but it will come. Are you communicating with God throughout the good and the bad? Are you remaining obedient to him in this crazy world that we live in today? I know I have my areas where I need some improvement and I really need to rely on God, especially in this fast. I didn't realize how bonded I was to food until I started fasting, how much I needed to rely on God for strength. I'm gonna wrap this video up here but I hope this gives you some things to think about, some things to rely on God for, and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see from me. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time with another video. Bye!